Hi, welcome to Music 523 Romantic History, an advanced music class, a graduate program at New Mexico State University. If you're watching this video and taking this class, you've probably seen videos like this before and you've taken classes with me already. So you already know your way around Canvas, so I'll keep this one real short. Uh, you are now watching the Get Started video, which of course is not posted yet because I'm making it now. Uh, we have the course syllabus here as a printer-friendly version, and it, of course, is posted over here in the menu as well. The class schedule is here, and you'll see it as well when you open the schedule. When you look down, you'll see, when you open the syllabus, you'll see the schedule all the way down. I've now rebuilt this class to go through modules like all of our other classes do. So the best thing to do is open that module. Open that module. There you go. And away you go. Now, this is a five-week summer class. Things are going to happen very quickly and very intensely. I have one deadline per week for this particular class. Right now, it's going to be Tuesdays, later semesters. That due date may change, but it's going to be one due date a week. You're going to have multiple assignments due on whatever given day is posted on Canvas. So the first week, you've got two homework assignments to do. Second week, you've got three homework assignments to do. Each homework assignment goes with a coinciding chapter, and you've got a research paper to do. I'll show you through those in a minute. More homework in the third week, a second research paper, and you're going to do a midterm test. These are true-false, multiple choice. They're open book, but you have to have read carefully because you only have a limited amount of time to do it. So as long as you know the book material, you're going to be fine with that. But plan ahead. You only get one shot at it, just like some other classes that I've done. It's just directed reading. It's to make sure you've done the reading. That's all it is. Week four brings you three more homework papers and the third research paper. Week four, the last two homeworks, the last research paper, and the final exam. So you can't do this in two hours before the deadline. This is days of work every time. I'm only giving you one deadline because it's an asynchronous class. You can work ahead at your own pace as long as you hit these weekly deadlines. You're going to be fine, but you've got to plan ahead. You're going to be doing work every day. You're going to be doing several hours of work every day. It's videos to watch. It's a lot of intense reading. It's a lot of score examples. Um, it's a complicated class, so plan ahead for your schedule. Let me just show you through a couple of the homeworks. The first one is the easiest. You will have read the first chapter of the book, and you will simply answer these questions. The second one is a little more involved. You're going to, again, read the second chapter. You're going to watch three performances of a given piece. You're going to write a reaction to that. You're going to watch all of the Leonard Bernstein Omnibus, which is absolutely fantastic. There's a question about that. And then there's a third question that deals with your scores. So that's how that works. When you click Next, it's going to take you into next week's module. Here's the third homework. It's essay questions, as you can see. Fourth homework has some essay questions. It has some score work to do. There's videos to watch. Every chapter is different. They all have similarities, but they all have their own unique things. So make sure you read all of these writing prompts with care. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm all choked up about this class. Here's your first writing assignment, and all four are going to work this way. You're going to have a general topic for each week. This first one is the evolution of Beethoven's music. And then you've got a specific suggested topic. And you've got five or six, usually, that you can choose from. I encourage you to pick something you like. This is another one of those deals where you're going to be living with it for a week or two. So you might as well pick something you're interested in. So I've given you a pretty broad array within this given topic. You can also find this same information on our Canvas homepage. Here's how to write research papers for Music 523. It gives you a lot of detailed information, including where I stole the idea for the class. It's drawn from a really fantastic class at Washington State. Uh, and here's all of the topics and all of the due dates. You can read all of this on your own, so I won't waste you much more time. I built this class years ago, and I was using Rhapsody, which, of course, turned into Napster. Uh, so this still says Rhapsody. I need to go back and change that. Sorry, that should say Napster now. But these are active links. So I left the Napster playlist. It's got a few holes in it, and i got to go back and fix those. It'll keep breaking. Napster, Spotify, YouTube, anytime you're using long playlists in a given thing, they bust. They break all the time. I need you as a student. As soon as you hit a bad link, just shoot me an email. I promise when I'm teaching this class, I'm paying close attention. I will respond quickly. And of course, you guys are adults. You're trained musicians. You know music. If you find that a link is broken or missing, just go find another recording. There are hundreds of recordings of every piece in this anthology, and it's really good. 
to listen to three or four different versions to get the different ideas of it. If you've never used Napster, you have a bad view of Napster. It went through a lot of transformations. You know, it was sort of illegal for a while. It was many, many years ago. Uh, this is perfectly legal. It's perfectly safe. You do have to pay a fee to be on Napster. Your other choice is Spotify. And I've just built Spotify links. And so I have a Spotify playlist. These are different than the Napster playlist. Some are the same. Some are crossovers because they're just my favorites. Others are different. Uh, so take a look through this. Uh, one in particular I want to point out to you is the Beethoven Third Symphony. I've given you two versions of the Beethoven Third Symphony on here. Sorry, I already went past it. Uh, and they're really cool because one is kind of a Bernstein omnibus again of him talking about Symphony Three, which he was a master at conducting. And then I've given you a totally different performance of it. Uh, with uh, Roger Norrington, who did the London Classical Players, but here he's working with a more modern orchestra, but he's doing that London Classical Players thing. The London Classical Players stuff is apparently out of print now, which is tragic. If you can find those recordings, they will change your life. They're truly amazing. But anyway, they're Spotify, and of course you can use anything. I don't care. Whatever you want to do to access the music, I encourage you to listen to a lot of different styles. A couple of times throughout the semester, I'll ask you to do readings from my Chapter 6 in Music 101. Uh, if you took Music 477, which most of you probably did watching this video, uh, you already have that book. But here's the chapter again. It's the Victor Borger excerpt. It's some of the other historical document excerpts that I'm using. Uh, my section on Wagner is kind of good. The talk about Fanny Mendelssohn and Clara Schumann, that's all in there. Yes, I'm using Wikipedia in a graduate level class. It's not the finish, it's just the start. But the wiki on Romanticism in general is pretty good. And of course, when you get down to the bottom, there's a ton of bibliography links there. You'll find a lot of good information. It's a good place to start. I have regrouped the writing tools from what I used to do in this class, and it's more like what you might have done in Music 450 uh, and what you've seen other places. So click on the writing tools and it'll take you to this separate page. We are currently in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis, and so our library is still closed. Uh, we don't know when it's going to reopen, but we have a lot of online um, materials, and people have made a lot of new stuff uh, free and available that hasn't been before. JSTOR has given away a lot more free stuff. There's a lot more online access than there used to be just because we need it in academia, and people are stepping up and doing it. So there's a resource list here from the library. There's an Excel file from the library. Uh, Scribd is something I've been using a lot lately, or Scribd, I still don't know how to say it. Uh, I find it very useful. There's a ton of good stuff there. You do have to pay a fee to join, but it's totally worth it. There's books on tape. There's all kind of crazy stuff. There's amazing music that you can download. I think some of it's not quite legal, but hey, uh, it's pretty cool stuff. This is my old resources video. Uh, the interface that I use here has changed, but it's the same information from NMSU Library. Just get on the library and you'll find it. Our NMSU Library homepage, our music guide homepage, this is where our Naxos is now. So if you need Naxos liner notes or recordings or anything like that, this is where you'll find those. Let me just take you back home. And that's it. So everything now is in the modules. Work your way right, way right through the modules now. Like I say, I have grouped these modules. I've always had homework and then the research paper. Homework, research paper, midterm. Blah, 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 blah. I don't care. I don't care what order you do it in. If you want to do the research paper first and then go back and do these homeworks, fine. If you want to get into week three when this test opens, take the midterm first and then do the however you want to do it. As long as you meet that weekly deadline with this work, you're fine. If you want to work faster and you want to work ahead, that's fine too. Uh, I will keep a close eye and I'll grade stuff just as quickly as I can once it comes in. So that's it. Welcome to Romantic Music History. You're going to cover a whole lot of ground in five weeks. One other thing I have to talk about quickly, I didn't mention at the top of the show. You need this book, the Romantic Music Anthology, and you need the textbook that goes with it, which I set down in my office and now can't find. Yes, this is live video. The Plangia book. All right, it's old. He's snarky. It's dry humor. Um, you can buy this book on Amazon brand new, and you can buy these two as a set brand new. You're certainly welcome to do that. I'm not a big advocate of the used book world, but when a publisher does something like this, here's a great book. Here's a great anthology. They have not updated it in 25 years. And so there are used books out there for six, seven dollars, and you can often find them on Amazon. In this particular case, why wouldn't you? It's exactly the same as the new book they're printing now for 80 bucks. Um, so that's life in the big city. You can get these on Amazon. Um, 
I did not order them to the NMSU bookstore. Again, we're in COVID-19 right now. The bookstore is closed. When the NMSU bookstore reopens, I usually don't order this because we're all taken online. Who knows what where you are? You could be in a different state. We're not sure. So that's why I'm using this book because you can get it in a, for a very affordable price. And you can. I just held it upside down and did it. And <laughs> it's an industry standard. And uh, it works really well. Now, I did make mention in an email that I sent out to everybody, and I'll say it again. When you read the Planship book, make sure you've got a good dictionary with you. Make sure you have the ability to look up foreign terms. Don't just gloss over them. He assumes a pretty good knowledge of French, German, and Italian, and Italian in his writing. So you need to look up any words you don't know. That's life in the big city in graduate school. All right? You've got to deal with foreign languages. That's really it. Get the books. Get to work. I'll see you online.